Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. And today we are bringing another one to you. How's it going, Show? It's going good. It's going good. How was the old weekend? Oh. Yeah, it was all right. Just all right? Did a, little, did a little fishing. Didn't catch anything. Hey, you know what, though? That's all good, though. You can fish without catching anything and still, you know, just enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah. A bad day of fishing is better than a good day of work any day. So I'm all right. I like that. So for those of you who don't know, this is a TCT. We call that True Crime Thursday. And uh, that's where we talk about, uh, well, criminals, of course. Criminals, crimes, things that uh, go awry. And today we are talking about one of the daddies of all criminals, a one the Mr. Charles Grau. Manson. And the boogeyman you know, himself. Yeah, I've I've done a little bit of research, but it seems like every time, and, and I guess this is the mark of uh, good criminology, you answer a question and another question pops up. <clears throat> so He's had several murders, but he wasn't the trigger man. He wasn't the knife guy. He's convicted by murder by proxy. So I'm going to get to that later, but I want you to just put that in the back of your mind for a minute. What kind of man has that big a hold on people that he can get them to do these things? And then, you know, as we as we answer that question, we're going to delve into his mind because I saw some videos, some interviews, and dude was, you know how we've done some serial killers and they seem like decent people. If you met them out in public, they might say one off crazy thing here or there. Everything that came out of this dude's mouth was crazy. Everything. Yeah, I have a theory on that, but we, we, we'll discuss Okay, so, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, Manson uh, was born, I think, November of 1934 in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he passed away November 19th in 2017. He was 83 years old. Um, he's known for the Manson family murders, and he had one spouse, Rosalie Willis. We'll get into that. Uh, they were divorced in 1958. She got out while she could. Uh, then there was uh, Leona Stevens. They divorced in 1963, and he's got three kids. So, you know, despite all that craziness, there was somebody willing to bear his children. Um, now, he was convicted for murders, and uh, it was seven counts of first-degree murder, and then conspiracy to commit murder. And his penalty was death, which was commuted to uh, life imprisonment. So he didn't get the chair. He didn't get the needle. He got life. I want to stop there. We know about how he acted, what he said, what he's done. Do you think life was a fair sentence for him? Yeah. You don't think lethal injection or electric chair would have I mean, it would have been better, yes, but is it was it fair that he got to rot? Sure. The reason why I ask that is because, you know, he's he's got these followers, so he can still have stuff done while he's around. Why not just, like, eliminate him and don't take any chances? Not Same that reason. anything happened, but, you know. Same reason why Al Qaeda didn't die when Osama bin Laden was killed. True. There'll be somebody else to come up and take his spot. Now, one of the videos that I saw on him, um, I don't know if you ever seen it before. I guess he was interviewed by Geraldo Rivera. Are you gonna play any of these? Um, you know, I can play that Geraldo video. Did you tell those women to kill somebody? No, no. 
I don't deal with women. I got to tell them what to do. They know what to do. And in your case, they knew to kill. They knew to take care of me. And you left the bloody trail. No, no, <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. You I, I'm going to pause it real quick right there. They knew to take care of me. So basically what she's saying is, I implied it and they did it. Now, I think later on in this interview, it might even be coming up here in a second. The question is going to get raised. What if they didn't do what you want? Just stick around for that answer. Um, to me, he's not all there. Um, he thinks very, very highly of himself. He says he's God. Um, so he's already got some issues, show. That's one way to look at it, yeah. All right, let's ramble on. Whoa, whoa, I said, you haven't seen the bloody trail yet. In this exclusive home in the hills above Los Angeles, owned by film director Roman Polanski, on a hot summer night in 1969, his wife, the actress Sharon Tate, coffee heiress Abigail Folger, friends Jay Sebring and Wojciech Pokowski, and neighbor Stephen Parent, became the first victims of the most gruesome, notorious mass murder in American history. Investigating the crime scene, all police could do was pick up the pieces. There were seven gunshot wounds, 169 stab wounds. The victim's fresh blood had been used to smear bizarre messages around the house. Even Sharon Tate's unborn child had been sacrificed. The eight-month fetus was stabbed in the wound. This was just act one in the Manson horror. The next night, supermarket tycoon Lino LaBianca and his wife Rosemary were added to the body count, butchered in the same ritualistic way. These murders weren't for money or revenge. They were the twisted idea of a career criminal named Charles Manson, the opening salvo of what he hoped would grow into a worldwide revolution. Helter Skelter, he called it, after a song by the Beatles. Manson was the evil mastermind of the scheme. But the murders themselves were carried out by disciples, his so-called family, a ragtag collection of college-age kids who had given up their middle-class lives to follow their sick messiah. He robbed us from our parents, and he gave us back to ourselves. Yeah, every girl ought to have a daddy like Charlie. Should, deserves to have a daddy like Charlie. He's That's not all squeaky. there either. Rome would later attempt to assassinate President Ford. That chick, her name is Squeaky. The Helter Skelter hit mm. team included Susan Atkins, who proudly came back to Charlie after it was over with the blood still on her hands. Patricia Krenwinkel, who before she met Charlie had been a Bible student and Sunday school teacher who planned on becoming a nun. And finally, the chief assassin, Charles Tex Watson, student body president, voted most likely to succeed. They were the supporting cast. But once the scheme unraveled, center stage was dominated by Mad Manson. The million dollar trial gripped and horrified the nation. Even President Richard Nixon couldn't resist getting involved. Originally condemned to die, Manson is now serving a life sentence and has long been eligible for parole. Unrepentant, he is still possessed by a satanic spirit, which is at once fascinating and repugnant. Are you gonna unhook me? Yeah. Unhook me then, damn it. Okay, let's get him unhooked. On Friday, March 11th, at San Quentin Prison outside of San Francisco, we explored the mind of a madman. Why do people murder? Why did those girls murder for you? Why did Texas... They didn't murder for me. You told them to. No, 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 no. Come back, DA. Come back. That's not reality. What is? No, reality is they did what they did. They're responsible for their own actions. I'm responsible for my actions. Did you tell those women to kill somebody? No. Do. Don't don't somebody, somebody Man, hey, 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 let me tell you something about tell a woman. Something. The women I got, I don't got to tell them what to do. If I got to tell them what to do, I'll send them up on the highway and get them away from me. I don't deal with women I got to tell them what to do. They know what to do. If they don't know what to do, they better get stay away from me. And in your case, they knew to kill. They knew to take care of me. They knew to kill. They knew you. to look out for number they one. They knew to kill for you. No, no. And you left a bloody trail around. No, 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 no. You who else knows? Whoa, what else you did? whoa! I said you haven't seen the bloody trail yet. <laughs> you haven't seen the bloody trail yet. What do you mean? Oh, it's been worse than that. You think? Oh, the nine was just the first little little marbles in the bucket. There's a whole road of people out there that's been getting killed. 
Why are 20,000 Americans being killed every year, Tony? Because the district attorneys are selling your blood, man. I don't understand that. The way you go to court, they need a conviction. They need criminals, man. They need people to lock up in cages. If they didn't have people to lock up in cages, man, they wouldn't be able to sell more fear to the public. And they sell more fear to the public, and all the old women, they love to buy that fear. They just lay back and watch that fear and read them detective magazines. What makes the knife or knife, the shoot or shoot? Society, the reflections of a child. But what about the responsibility of the person who's doing it? Who, what person is doing it? Susan Atkins. Susan Atkins is only doing what the society raised her up to do. Wasn't she only doing what you raised her? No, no, no. Come on. You set a baby in the cradle and you go, I'm like a black and white, it's getting me like a black and white, it's getting He's just no more, he's no more younger, older than I am. He's just a baby in the cradle. You tell him, baby, won't you light my fire? Baby, won't you light my fire? And then the kid grows up, and what's he start doing? <laughs> he starts lighting fire. You say, no good kid, fire bug, and throw him in reform school. You can't put the issue off on Charlie and say it's all Charlie's fault. It Show won't keep... Murder. Charlie it won't keep... The issue. Okay, I, mill, I'm, I kill everybody since day one. I murdered them all. I'm God and I've killed everybody. Now what? You know, where I come from, the guys with guts, they do it themselves. Come on, man. What if I just jumped on you and beat that dog shit out of you? Would that make you feel any bigger? <laughs> you would or what have about if you three friends? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Size yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're a dreamer. <laughs> yeah, you're a dreamer. I got dealt the hand, hippie cult leader. What the hell is a hippie cult leader? Wait, you want to be a hippie cult leader? Hippie cult leader, all right. Here's your family card. Oh, I'm the family, uh-huh. I'm all right. I got family card, hippie cult leader. Mass murderer. Oh, mass murderer. Nine dead bodies. Now I got this hand. Now, how would you play it? How would you play it? How would you play this hand here? You scare people, Charlie. People are scared, and they use me as an excuse. They're afraid of what they don't understand and what they don't know. They're afraid of Susan Atkins' bloody hands. Susan Atkins is working on her problems, man. She's got her world to deal with. Each one of those people that you call my family, they were geniuses. They all had college educations. Every one of them was very smart young people. They were a generation of the 60s. I wasn't a generation of the 60s. I'm a Bing Crosby fan, not a Beatle fan. You guys make me into be something I wasn't. I never had a beard or long hair in my life. I was a beatnik, not a hippie. You know, it's like, um, I'm street. I'm all the way street. I live in jail. Like a lot of kids. They get busted when they're 8 and 10 years old because they don't have no parents. The jails are full of them. We've heard that phrase before, nuttier than a fruitcake. Yeah, Charles is nuttier than a fruitcake. And the I way disagree. he... The way he takes the, uh... He puts off the blame on everybody else, but at the same time, he claims the responsibility. Low key, you know. Yeah, I, I disagree. He's not. A, he, I don't think he's nuttier than a fruitcake. I think he is highly intelligent. Was highly intelligent and a master manipulator. You can't be. Some I would agree with nut. all that. He can't be some nut who has no marbles in your head at all and convince people to do what those people did. Let me re let me retract that then. I would say he's troubled. Um, I mean... Because, yeah, yeah, he does show a massive amount of intelligence. And, yeah, he is a master manipulator. I mean, I think, you know, he... We're looking at the era, right? You know, so when that, so when you had the family, they were doing a lot of drugs and things. Um, I, I think the majority of what you see in like this particular interview is all an act. He enjoys the fame. He enjoys the spotlight. So I don't know if you know this, but so, uh, let, let's go to the original uh, five people that were killed. The Tate murders there at the at Roman Polanski's Polanski's house. house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So prior to that, uh, one of the musicians from the Beach Boys lived there, and he was a really good friend of Charles Manson. 
And when they lived at the ranch, the guy would come down to the ranch and obviously, you know, it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Mm -hmm. You know, all the sex you want, all the drugs you want free and all that. And and, uh, Charles was a... um, an aspiring musician had a decent voice, could play the guitar, but wanted to be a famous musician like the Beach Boys. I'm trying to look up the guy. Um, I don't, I don't recall the song, but there was a song that he sang that he wanted the Beach Boys to um, help him produce. They didn't, but they took the words from the song and made it one of their own. That pissed Charlie Manson off. Mm. So the whole point of them going to that house to kill those people was to kill the guys from the Beach Boy. But he had already moved out. And Polanski and his people moved in. They were just victims of circumstance. He, it wasn't a random thing that he sent them people there to that house. It wow. was a random, it, they just happened to be there. And because Charles had basically told them, kill everybody in the house. I don't care who's there. But the and person they for really. Polanski, he wasn't there. Right. Roman Polanski was overseas directing a movie. Uh, but that was the reason for them going uh, in the first place. So. Because Charles wanted to be some famous musician, that's where I go to. He's enjoying the fame of being this crazy cult leader, you know, that commanded people to murder. And, you know, he's just, and he got his fame in a different way. Uh, Dennis Wilson was the beach boy that. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel you on that. Um do you think that the the fact that they took the uh, lyrics and made it into a hit put him over the edge, or was he already over the edge at that time? I mean, define the define over the edge. I mean, was he was he? Um, I, I'm very hesitant to call him crazy, um, but. Did he think a lot differently than a complete sane like you and I would? You know, I would say yes. He's a little bit more out there. Uh, you know, I'm, but he he was a, a career criminal from stealing cars and things like that. Pimping out chicks, you know, the whole nine, drug dealing. Um, now, let's not forget, too, that Manson was a white supremacist. I mean, hey, the swastika um, give it away. Uh, I, basically, you, you can't call him that. You can't. He wasn't. He wasn't part of any uh, group organization. No. Was he a racist? Yes. His, his particular cult believed that there was going to be an impending race war between America's black minorities and a larger white population. And it says here, Manson uh, told some of the family that black people would rise up and kill the entire white population except mm-hmm. for Manson and his followers. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the cult that believed that. That was Charles. That was himself. Yeah. So yeah. he wasn't like a part of anything um, in that aspect. Like he wasn't uh, a white supremacist. You know, he wasn't burning crosses and things of that nature. Uh, no, no, in no he, way. He, he, he wasn't a member of the Klan. But, Define, I mean, he was a definite racist and was using the civil rights era, late 60s, as an avenue to do the criminal things that he did. Yeah, I think as a manipulator that he is, I think that that aspect, the racial aspect, is just one of the things that he used to manipulate the people around him. Yes, by all means. I totally agree. All right, let's go ahead and finish out this Geraldo thing, and then we'll uh, get back uh, full circle here. All right. Yeah, I, uh, I, I chopped up nine hogs, and I'm going to chop up some more of you mother. I'm going to kill you as many as I can. I'm going to pile you up to the sky. 
I figured about 50 million, if I could get about 50 million of you, I might be able to save my trees and my air and my water and my wildlife. You want to kill 50 million people? Well, that's, that's just a drop in the bucket to what's really coming. <laughs> Welcome to the sick mind of a mass murderer, incapable of compassion, alienated all his life from normal society. He lives in a bizarre world of violent thought. I don't care about your society. The public's a bunch of assholes. What when it care? comes down to it, they're for, they're for sale. They're what you, bought. What do you care about, though? I care about life. But you care All about life. life. But you'll kill 50 million people. Oh, no, I didn't say I would kill anything. I'm reaping the heads in thought. I'm Jesus Christ. Whether you want to accept it or not, I don't care. I got the thought. I'm reaping it in thought. In thought. It's a thought. You see what I'm saying? In other words, the whole world is in a thought. And I am in the thought of peace on earth. I want to know how you feel about the fact that you are the stuff of a nation's nightmare. For years, you were the personification of everything evil, everything rotten in this country. Yeah, you dumped it all off on me. I was your goat. Like many paranoid psychotics, Manson blends a martyr complex with the sick illusion that he alone is innocent in a guilty world. Now, we'll say that I am all these things that you think I am. Wouldn't that be more fearful than letting me try to be a nice guy would you want to make me into those things would you want me that's to why i said he's like not dumb you? yeah that's your judgment now the judgment you're making on this mirror man you got to carry you want to make me a terrible violent no good so and so and rah, rah, rah. when actually in reality i'm a deadhead man i've been dead since 1951 I died in the penitentiary in solitary confinement. Don't you understand? I've been in jail since I was nine years old. I've sat in that cell 18 years. If you sat in that cell two weeks, you'd be banging your head on the wall. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you come and live with yourself in a little old square box for 18 years with everybody getting down on you. And they haven't touched me, man, because I know what I did. I don't break laws. I make laws. I'm the lawmaker. I'm the one that laid the track down. I make the loss from here. This is me. Nixon was only playing over. That's me. As our conversation continued, Charlie became more and more delusional, crossing the line between omnipotence and nothingness. I reflect the will of God, son. You can have anything I got. What God is that, Charlie? Yeah, the will of God. Whatever you want to call it, that up and down, down again. You call it Jesus, call it Muhammad, call it Boogie Bops, call it Boogie, call it nuclear mind, call it blow the world up, call it uh, your heart, call it whatever you want to call it. It's still music to me. It's there. It's the will of life. They crowd me and I got this little space. My life is bigger than this little space. I live in the desert. I live in the mountains, man. I'm big. My mind is big. But everybody's trying to crowd me down and push me down and make me into all these little things that they need me to be. And that's not me at all, man. That's not me. See, there's a reverse side of everything, too. There's a positive and a negative. You come over like that. I was listening to, uh, to that. Is there any positive side to Charlie Manson? <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. Charlie Manson, I'm both negative and positive. Are you good and evil? I'm a nerd thing. You're evil? I'm everything, man. Tell me about the evil. I'm as whatever I have to be to survive. Would you do anything to survive? Well, what? I'm, I'm human being. I think that you are an evil person. Right, I'm evil. I'm terrible. You are a terrible Oh, yeah, person. I'm awful. I'm awful. You're a murdering dog, sir. Oh, I'm a terrible dog. I'm a fiend. You're a mass murdering I'm dog. A mass murdering dog. The dude is... A psychopath, a sociopath, a narcissist. He is all of those things. But downright just flipping out crazy, mind gone, no. The dude is is lap, lapping up, lapped up back, especially back then in the 80s, lapped up the attention and loved every second of it. After seeing that, I can't unsee that without listening to your words. Because it, it, it makes it blatantly obvious. I am going to soak up 
this however many minutes of fame and people will talk about me forever. Imagine the imagine the 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 prison cred that he he got while he was there. He wasn't attacked. He wasn't, you know, maybe by the guards, but he had protectors. You know, it's not like he had to worry about, you know, if he dropped the soap in the shower, would somebody mess with him? You know, that type of thing. Yeah. You know, I'm sure they kept him away from most people just because of his, because of the whole, um, you know, crazy thing. I mean, I shit, if I went to prison for the rest of my life, I'd fucking play crazy too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. Because, you know, I know I wouldn't survive in prison, so I, I'm got to act a fool. You know, and but let's let's break down the actual events, okay? I mean, mm -hmm. was he was he uh, in charge? Like, if he said, don't do it, would those people have still gone through it? No. I, I agree that, that he is the precipitator of said events. And when he didn't get enough attention from the first one, that's when he told the other people to go hit the other two, uh, the Labiancas, and and that type of thing, because he wanted to start that uh, what you call it, the helter skelter uh, war. Um, I, I I also think, and I'm not for sure. I, I for, if I'm if memory serves me right, and this is going off of the book Helter Skelter which was written by the lead prosecutor of that case. If I'm not mistaken, memory served me right, because it's been years since I read it, but there was a witness of some sort that was supposed to testify at the court, and he disappeared. Mm. Uh, obviously, they didn't need him for a guilty verdict but he was supposed to somehow uh, uh and i don't think i'm mixing up my my cases in my head but uh i'm pretty sure that there was a witness or it wasn't a juror but it was a witness i'm, I'm pretty sure that that uh and they found him dead like on the side of a hill somewhere like months later coincidence i think not Oh, no, no. I think that was planned. He had one of his people do it. Okay, so we know about the followers who were uh, involved in the murders themselves. How many other followers do you think he had out there? Oh, I'm sure he had dozens, you know. Um, was it like a Oh, I mean, I don't know. No, nah, I'm really not going to say it was like a Jim Jones kind of cult. But where... even Jim Jones had just a group of people. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, a couple hundred people maybe. But in the drop, that's a drop in the bucket in the grand scheme of things. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like he had. It's not. I, I'll use this as a cult. It's not like he's Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there are there are millions of followers of that uh, of right. that genre. You know. So it wasn't like it wasn't the Waco type of deal. I, you know, kind of like in the same thing. I mean, but yeah, I would say dozens. I wouldn't. I don't even think it was hundreds with Charles. I think after a while, the the novelty of of him kind of wore off on them because they were in society. I would agree with that. Um, I would say that if he was if he was still out on the loose, then yes he would have been able to 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 build more and make that a snowball effect. I think we're in total agreement there. Um, obviously, um, yes, he was highly intelligent. He used the uh, craziness to his advantage. Uh, yeah, to me, he was a whack job, you know, smart as hell, knew how to use it, knew how to play the system. Um, I am amazed, you know, still, like I said at the beginning of the episode, that he got life. I really am. And I think his saving grace was he never laid a hand on a victim. Well, and I could be wrong here, but was there a time when the state of California 
took away the death penalty and it got commuted to life? Uh, you could be right. I'm not sure. I, I'd, I'd have to see, see what their laws were during that time period. And, and I'm pretty sure he would have got the chair. I don't think there was like lethal injection or gas chamber. I think no, I don't, think, got I don't think California had that. Um, I, I think, think it was I the know, chair. Because I know old Sparky was in San Quentin. <laughs> That's the chair. Uh, but I, I, I'm i pretty sure. I mean, again, I, I say pretty sure. I'm 50% positive that possibly <laughs> they they got rid of the death penalty at that time, and that's why he got commuted to, to life uh, in prison. But, you know, it could also be they, they commuted him because they wanted to study his mind. I mean, there are hundreds of interviews. Take on that. I mean, there's hundreds of interviews. I mean, he was one of the main people that... Uh, the FBI, uh, what do they call them? Uh, Profilers? Yes. He was one of the ones that they uh, used to come up with the profiling system. Mm. Uh, him and Ed Kemper, the co-ed killer, they were one of the two, they were two of the main ones that they, that they used. So maybe that was part of it too. Um but I think you know after you know after the '80s were over and the '90s started, he you know Charles Manson was a novelty. You know, it was just more like the boogie man himself. Yeah, and we talk about it with a lot of criminals that we talk about on our true crime days. So I'm bringing it up with Charles Manson. What would he be like if he came around now instead of the '60s? Would he still be able to do pull off what he pulled off? Yes. Um, I'm going to say yes, but differently. I think he would be smart enough to use the technological tech technology that we have nowadays in his favor to to spread his message, probably to get more followers. He's very charismatic. Yeah. Um, I mean, if he wasn't intriguing, we wouldn't even be talking about him right now. Yeah. And the reason why I brought up that question, if you look at society now, um, there's still hate. There's still racism. Oh, but yeah. it's all done on a different level now. And I think that if he came around now, he definitely would adapt to the way things are now, both in his message of what he's spreading and also to protect himself, because obviously nobody wants to go to jail. So, you know, he's going to do whatever he can to spread his message and stay out so that he can continue to spread it. So he would use that to his advantage. Yeah, I think he really, truly thought that since he didn't actually commit the act itself, that he would not be convicted. Yeah, Um and do you realize how they actually got busted? They were staying at the oh, what's what's the ranch called? It was a place where they used to make make old cowboy movies, and they were staying on this old cowboy set that they called the ranch. Anywho, they were still in cars, and the the theft ring got busted, and all those people got picked up and arrested. And then they were able to, you know, obviously you fingerprint. You know, you know start... that that seems to be the mo of just about every big criminal that's been captured. They've been calling something smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, one that comes to mind, Al Capone. They got him for tax evasion. Yeah, he got away with anything and everything he wanted to. If he'd have just paid his taxes, he'd still be in business. Yep. Well, he died of syphilis, so I don't think he'd still be in business. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> he, he was going out one way or the other, but he would have lasted right. a little bit longer. Um, I, it, you know, with Charles Manson, I think he belongs in a completely different category for serial killer versus 
you know, like the choke and stroke killer that we talked about a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's a different category. Definitely. I mean, he didn't live in the shadows like these other guys did. No, he was definitely out there. Right. All right. So before we wind it on down, are there any other things that you want to talk about as far as Manson? Um, no, I, I mean, not really. I mean, we, we pretty much touched base. I'm sure there's obviously we could have went in more detail uh, about the actual attacks themselves, but I don't think that needs any more spotlight put on yeah, it. Yeah, I, I left that um, alone because that spoke for itself. Right. Uh, but there are some really good, like, fictional movies about that particular act. And um, obviously, uh, like, the, there's there's one really good one, and it's it's strictly about the girls. I think it's called Manson's Girls. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's, it's a very good, uh, very good movie on the inside of how he was able to manipulate uh, the people to do the things that he needed or wanted them to do. And, I mean, they did more than just murder for him. I mean, they did everything for him. Which is um, what and he then, wanted, and that's what he alluded to earlier. And then there's a great movie, and I'm a huge Tarantino fan. So I love Pulp Fiction. I love Django. I love The Hateful Eight. His last movie that he made was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. And that has the Manson family involved in it. But the whole, you know, it's called Once Upon a Time. So obviously it's make-believe. But uh, it's definitely a fun watch. Um, one that I would recommend, it is a drama uh, based on all of this. Uh, Helter Skelter. Easy to remember. Same song as the Beatles. Uh, and until I you know, started digging into this, I thought the song came after Manson, not before. So I, I had learned something new, you know, doing my research. I suggest reading the book versus watching the show. Really? You'll get a lot more out of the book. Okay. Because yes. it gives you perspectives especially from the prosecution side and the police department on what they actually felt when they walked into those crime scenes. Mm. Definitely going to have and to it's check a, that out. It's a pretty thick book, but yeah, it's definitely worth reading. Well, I ain't going anywhere anytime soon, so I, I don't mind reading big big books. Me neither. I, I need to do more of that anyway. I, I've kind of gotten away from reading as much as I should, and I call myself a writer. But don't tell my wife, because she'll make fun of me. Secret is safe for me. All right, Big Show. Another great one. As we get yes. out of here, though, you guys, I love it when you comment, especially on YouTube, but you can comment on any uh, format that you want to. Or you can leave us an email at the Slightly Warped Podcast uh, at yahoo.com. Let us know what you think about Charles Manson. How prolific do you think he is? compared to others that we've talked about and who would you like to hear us uh, talk about leave that comment as well because you know we love our uh, true crime Thursdays um, get at us let us know yes show thank you so much for joining me again today take us on out of here thank you guys for watching hit the subscribe button hit the little bell so you know when we post our videos and then we'll see you next week don't forget, love somebody. Tell them that you love them tomorrow. It's not promise. See you next week. See you guys.